Good morning. Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm here with Madame Motak. Um, she's a member of the Human Rights Committee. The committee's just concluded its 105th session, and I um, was wondering if you could speak with us a little bit about um, the review of Armenia, their second and third periodic report. Hello, Ashley. Very nice to speak with your center again. Thank you. And um, yes, indeed, uh, we had we are going to conclude this uh, this Friday afternoon the session, and uh, we adopted already the the observed conclusion operation of Armenia. It was the concluding observation after the second and the third report of Armenia. And if we have to retain something, if we have to keep something in mind of this uh, this report and our concluding observation are mainly uh, issues that are dealing with the state of emergency, which was declared in 2008. And uh, we had analyzed this in the light of Article 4 of our covenant, but also we had, um, we had to, to study this article in relationship with other, other violations of human rights that were invoked to us, especially uh, things that, that uh, deal with people who died during these events and which are really the circumstances that they were, they were killed in the previous mass massacres before the state of emergency. Also, the problem of um, people who were arrested during afterwards and uh, in which condition they were arrested and if their uh, freedoms were really respected uh, after the, the declaration of, of the state of uh, emergency. One issue that uh, that had also uh, preoccupied us it was the the, um, the issue of corruption and the independence of the judiciary, and not only this, but how the corruption, day-to-day -day corrupt, what you call day-to-day -day corruption, is really uh, functioning in uh, in Armenia, and we were very helpful, we were very grateful to the NGOs because they had uh, brought to us this issue and also they had explained us how the judiciary is uh, it's working in Armenia. And we made several uh, recommendations in order to have really an independent judiciary and to, to limit the, the, the corruption or, or to have no corruption ideally in, uh, in Armenia. Also, I think when one of the issues that uh, was, uh, was brought to us and afterwards we kept it in the, in the conclusion and uh, the recommendation were discrimination against the LGBTs. There were a lot of NGOs that raised with us this question and uh, we speak again about their life, day-to-day -day life and how they are discriminated in their, in their work or how they have to hide themselves because they are not accepted by the, by the society. But also, uh, it, it is that um, it's the fact that uh, uh, during the military service, they have they are kept in a very bad bad situation there, so they face other discrimination. That uh, that uh, in in this situation, and they are completely isolated. Even in prisons, they are completely isolated for other. So we see a society which is not willing to accept uh, their sexual orientation, uh, and uh, of course against women and especially the, the question of violence against women. We don't have yet a law of uh, regarding violence against women. It was a draft, but of course, as the committee had said all the time, drafts are not enough for us. We have to have the law. And uh, it's, it's a widespread phenomenon, so we really uh, it has to be dealt in, in a certain way with, uh, with, this, with violence against women and also the question of discrimination of women in, in general of women, the question of representation in parliament, the, first, the question of the city, because when a woman who is going to leave the parliament is not a woman who is going to replace but, uh, but a man afterwards. And uh, it's um, also, I think, uh, the religious freedom were, were very much in our attention, and the situation of the, the what you call the new religion, the Jehovah's uh, Witness, and again their condition in the military service, and how Armenia has to offer them uh, proper military service, a civil military service and not which is like this one uh, very military side because in this moment uh, the Jehovah's Witness cannot go to the military service, the civil service that was offered to them because they thought it was it is too military for their religion and we don't have indeed a solution for them yet and there are still uh, some uh, Jehovah's Witness in the prison 
because they, they didn't want to, to go to either the, the military service, of course, or, or the civil service that would propose to them, and they are not, uh, it's not compatible with their, with their uh, religion. So we see a widespread form of, uh, of violation of, of human rights. And um, we were very grateful, as I said, to NGOs because they brought to us all these issues and we, we uh, understood more the situation on the ground. But also we were, we are very, um, we had a good dialogue with the state, so the state made the effort to, to answer to, to most of our, uh, our questions, so they prepare and they have answers for, uh, for most of our uh, questions. Thank you for highlighting some of the, the main issues that were discussed during the review of Armenia. And so in light of those issues, could you just tell us a little bit about what the next steps will be for follow-up? For follow-up, of course, we have the follow-up rapporteur and uh, it will sort of see, as usual, you know, what happened with our conclusion and recommendation. And also we ask NGOs to bring us information to this, to this rapporteur in order to have a better check with, uh, with uh, the, the government in the, in the process. And Armenia will submit our next its next report in uh, in four years. Great. Thank you so much for being with us this morning, Madam Wilcox. We appreciate your taking the time. Thank you very much, Ashley.